My name is Angela. My name is Nicole. And welcome to the Ominous Stitch Podcast. Hello, Stitcher. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another amazing episode of the amazing. Ominous Stitch Podcast. How's everybody doing today? What's up, Summer? What's up? Oh, my gosh. No kidding. We've had this crazy <laughs> heat wave here. It's so cold. And then, of course, it all of a sudden got it's really hot. It's been in the hundreds. Yeah, I feel Ugh. like in the last podcast, I was just talking about how June gloom yeah. set in. <laughs> and now here we are in July. And it's like, nope, we're nope. in 100 degree weather. It's hot. Plus. Well, you are hotter for sure. Yeah. You're a little bit farther up, but in, in like the no man's land yeah i'm in the desert <laughs> in the desert it's hot it's hot here actually it's, it's called the chaparral what, what yeah that's what this uh, area is called the chaparral so i, I learned that recently ch chaparral what's that mean so it's a climate zone that's kind of like a high desert um but it's the same kind of climate zone in a lot of areas that grow a lot of grapes and olives and ah, kind of like mediterranean i was gonna say of, greek yeah okay yeah, cool. Which is interesting. I'm like, ooh, Mediterranean. Hey. Nice. But it's, it's just dry. <laughs> That's it's really not as it exciting. Is. Dry, and there's no grass. It's all like brushy. And mm. yeah. So anyway, exciting. Yeah. Chaparral. Chaparral. It just sounds pretty that way. Learn something new every day. Hey, yo. What's, so what's got you in stitches today? So I love my stitch today. I think this is the cutest thing. Okay. So I've talked about my dog quite a bit, Rosie. She's awesome. We adopted her. She's. Oh gosh, seven now. I can't believe she's seven. They she's grow so lady. fast. They grow up so fast. <laughs> but she is like the best dog. She's always very happy, very smiley. She's she the loves sweetest. people. Yes. She loves to hang out with everybody. And she's mellow. And she, yeah, she can be very I mellow. Want a mellow dog. I know your dog is the opposite <laughs> of my dog. I love him, but <laughs> he's very hyper. He is hyper. He's so he's so fun. He's though. just happy. Yeah, and he talks a lot. Yes, he's, he's got a lot to <laughs> <He's> say. <vocal. laughs> he's got a lot to tell you. He does. But anyway, so yeah, Rosie is the best dog, and she has adapted to farm life quite well. She loves it here on the farm. Yeah. She's always like running around trying to help. When the alpaca get loose, she tries to herd them. I've talked about that before. Well, she like run around and bark at them. They just kind of look at her like, what are Why? you doing? And then she comes up to me and she's like, I'm doing it, mom. I'm doing it. <laughs> she's all happy and smiley. And I'm like, you're doing nothing but good try. Dog. So now she has decided to help with the eggs in the morning and then the afternoon or whenever our chickens are laying eggs. So it's summertime. And because we had this heat wave, the chickens have decided they don't want to lay in their oh, nesting no. boxes because it's too hot. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. So now they're just laying everywhere because we free range them. We let them run around the farm during the day. And so they're just laying everywhere. And so we egg go hunt, egg hunt. Yeah. We go on egg hunt several times Easter a day. Every day. <laughs> right. <laughs> so much fun. I love it. So, but we like kind of know they have spots. Like we have some chickens that love to lay in this one tree, which is really funny. But they built this nest in a tree, so we always go check the tree. Is it really h not high up in the tree? They can't no, fly. They, no, they can jump oh. and glide. Oh, okay. And, yeah, it's not high up in the tree. They can. That's so get cute, up there. though. But it's really cute. They're it's like my roots. I'm yeah, a bird. Yeah, I think my son introduced them to the spot. He Aww. just put a chicken in there. He's like, "Look, this is so funny. There's a chicken in a tree." And then they started. And they're like, there. "Oh, oh, cool, cool, cool." They're like, "Ooh, it's a nest. <laughs> I can lay here." So they lay everywhere. And so we go out several times a day to go on egg hunts so that we can make sure that we collect all the eggs before any other kind of creature starts collecting the eggs. Ugh. And now our dog has joined in on the hunt. And so because she's a very helpful, sweet dog, she will very carefully pick up the egg and try to bring it back to the house Aww. unharmed. Yay! And... She has not been successful at that at those attempts until today. She was very successful. She'll bring the egg in and either she'll crack it in her mouth because she'll just bite down She's too hard or <laughs> or she'll bring it into the house and then drop it, which, of course, we have tile floors, so that will crack. Yeah. But today she decided I mean, I'm trying to get her to drop it in my hand. Oh, but today she decided, ooh, maybe if I drop it on the rug, it won't crack. And I was like, <gasps> and then it didn't. So Yay! it was nice. She Good was job, very Rosie. successfully brought in an egg 
and set it down on the rug. It didn't crack. It was fully intact. Oh, farm dog. <laughs> so I have a dog that likes to hunt for eggs Yay! now. <laughs> oh, Rosie, I'm so proud of you. It's so cute. I'm she, looking at her she now. She's like so, so proud. Yeah, she's so proud when she does it. She's so cute. Oh, good dog. And I have to tell a quick little side note because I was saving the story to to tell Nicole on the podcast and I wanted her like very authentic, real reaction because I knew she was going to love the story. It's the sweetest. The second she walks in the house, <laughs> my kids tell her three times the story. <laughs> Mrs. Helmut, look, that's a dog and Rosie and the eggs. I was like trying not to listen. To I them. know. I was like, don't listen, don't listen. This is my stitch on the podcast. But my kids can't help it. They're too excited. It's adorable. Yeah. It's so cute. She's but she was very dog. proud of herself. Yeah. Everyone's very proud of Ro- Rosie. She's such a good girl. I love it. Yay. Good job, Rosie. Good farm dog. Training her well. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I help her on the farm. Now, you gotta, now she's going to do it all the time. And now she's just I know, be she's your main gonna, source of egg we're hunting. Bring, I know. We're like, Rosie, go get eggs. <laughs> she knows where to go. I don't want to go outside. You go, go <laughs> it's get too hot eggs. outside. <laughs> yeah. She's got a good sniffer. She can figure out where all the eggs are. Oh, good puppy. Yeah. I love it. So what's got you in stitches, Nicole? So I saved this for you because I didn't want to ruin the surprise. No. <laughs> We've got a summer. We got a new summer event going on in our in, the, in our household. Uh-huh. And um, my husband has got us all playing Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> I didn't want to ruin it because I know your daughter was talking about it. My like, oldest loves Dungeons and Dragons. Yep. She has a little crew that she plays with at school. And when her best friend is the dungeon master and it's so fun. It's they, so cute. I love w- listening to her talk about it. And I love that she has this little crew and they I all play together. That. And it's, yeah. It's so awesome. Fun bonding event. Yeah. yeah so my hubs has a, his, all his friends back home. They do it every Tuesday night usually. So they have their campaign and he decided to get a starter kit for our kids and do it with the family. But he's like, you have to play because you need to help the kids. I'm yeah. Like, okay. I'll play. <laughs> but it's fun. It's though, cute. Isn't yeah. It? No, I have to play two characters. They have uh-huh. their own and they even drew their characters. He had him draw oh, them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's adorable. Awesome. So that's what I was telling you we were doing the other day was that, like, for a couple hours, that's what we did. Yeah. We, we were battling zombies. Oh, and fun. I kept rolling a one, and I kept <gasps> <No>! losing. <laughs> I was like the worst luck ever. <laughs> it was the cutest. And, and of course, the littlest one, he was so good at it. And he's like helping me out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and my, my oldest one's like sus of everything. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> but yeah, that's our event now. That's oh, what we do that's now. that's so fun. And being Dungeon Master, he, my hubs is very stressed out. Oh, I bet. I bet. So much research goes into <laughs> yes. it. Yes. a lot of work. So much. Like we've done a couple of little uh, campaigns when the kids were younger Aww. to get them into it. And we have yeah. a starter kit too that yeah. we haven't. Uh, we haven't opened and done and done anything with because my daughter likes to do homebrew so they make everything up oh wow they don't follow any kind wow, of script or anything. that's like, cool her her friend makes it up they have their own world they they planned for two or three months what their world was and the things that kind of existed in it and how things would would work that's in there. so cool and i didn't so know they, you could do that yeah you can make up your own i thing. thought you had to go like that he's so into these rules it's crazy well yeah i mean you can set your own rules but if yeah. you're following a preset campaign yeah then yes you want to follow it that way so yeah. just like it really depends on that's so cool how you want to do it yeah and so yeah, so my daughter has her own thing. Her friends, they set up this whole world, and it's fantastic. Love it. Out. But we started, we've done a couple of campaigns on our own, and so we have our own characters that we play, and we play very basic, oh. loose rules when sure. we do it. And so my husband very wa- waters everything down. He's a dungeon master. Nice. And it's so fun. So the first one that we did was some was some kind of like dragon kind of campaign. And nice. the kids didn't really know what was going on. So it was kind of their introduction. Mm-hmm. And we went to the tavern at one point. And so that's when we broke for dinner and we had ordered pizza. And so we had pizza and I made butter beer for everybody at the oh, tavern. The kids fun. didn't. They were so into it. They didn't even realize that I had gotten up and gotten pizza from the door like somebody came and brought pizza to our house 
and I had made butter beer for Look them. Look at you. They had no idea. They were so into what I we were doing. That. And then we had like, uh, I think jelly beans were the dragon eggs or something oh, like that. And it was really fun. Aww. And then we've done another, we did this whole like Candyland campaign another time. And then we had this other campaign that I, we still haven't done yet, but I think we're still working on it. But yeah, he plans a lot. It's so like, much work. It's yeah, but it's so much fun. Yeah. It's so much fun. And yeah. We have such a good time. We have all our dice. We have so many dice. It's crazy. <laughs> so I just, it's so cute to see everybody. Like, Has he 3D printed a dice tower? Yes. Yes, I figured he we would. Have many of those. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, we have many of those. The kids are using them right now. But yeah, it's just cute. I just like that we have a little family thing to do. We have to kind of rein in the little one, his attention span. Yeah. <laughs> he's I'm like sure. Yeah, he's, he's all like... over the place, but it's good and they're having fun. And so, but Yay. but the oldest is he's just like, are you gonna play again today? I'm like, oh, if you want to. And oh, then, I love yeah. it. That's so, so good. That's our family thing. Aww. Yeah. I so love everybody's it. Everybody's out it's there, so geeks of D and D. Let us know. D and D is awesome. Yeah. I'm so glad that so many people are. I feel like it's being rediscovered because it was such like a a, a niche nerd thing it was. for a long time. Yeah, but it's so cool. No, it's so cool. And it's funny. I went to uh, a pizza place the other day. It was like a week or two ago, mm -hmm. and they had a little board game store right next to it. And they had like you can scan it and check out. There's like camps for D and D. And I was yeah. like, oh, that is so cute. It, it costs way more than I thought. And it was yeah. like 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. I was like, who has the time to do that for the kids? Right. I was yeah. like, I gotta work. But um, but I was like, yeah, there's online ones too, so I might get them into that when I'm not. Oh, fun. Yeah, you can just—it's yeah. like cheap, and you can have them learn and do things with um, oh, how cool. people. So yeah, I want to—I think I'm going to get that. But yeah, that's our little thing now. I love it! Yay! Yay. <laughs> good story. Oh, fun time. Well, this week's episode. Yes. You don't even know. I have no idea. I was—I could not figure out what to do. I know you were so <laughs> all over the place. You're like, we're going to do this one. No, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Okay. Regardless no. <laughs> of what our, whatever I come up with. I was like, I got to come up with something. This is the movie we're going to watch. So yes. watch this movie and I'll come up with something. Yeah. So I have no idea Nothing's what we're doing Nothing's tied together. Today. Yeah, you'll see. Yeah, you're not going to know until I start yeah, talking. Yeah, because like I know whatever my stitch is is yeah. not tied into nope. what we're doing. Today is a hodgepodge day. We usually are really good about themes, but no. Yeah. It's summertime. We got summer brain. We're yes. going all over oh the place. Oh my God, my brain's so summer. So go on this fun summer trip with us. We're going to be all over the place today. Yay! Yay! So should we get stitching? Yeah! Let's get stitching. Okay, stitchers. So for this week's stitch... I decided to do a sunflower granny square. Yay! So this is also, it can be a daisy, but because I did yellow yarn, it is a sunflower. I love sunflowers <laughs> and I love yellow. So what inspired this was the bag that I made uh, a few episodes back. I made a sunflower bag. Mm -hmm. This is not the same sunflower, but this is like such a cute, easier way to do the sunflower. Oh, I like easier. It Yeah. And, and it made me work on doing the magic ring because you guys... I am not good <laughs> at magic rings. I don't know why. I can't figure it That's out. That's fine. That's the only thing I do. And I sit there. I can't figure I out know, everything else you do. You do magic rings all the time. <laughs> and I'm like, why can't I get it to work? But I did it today. Yes. Like I got Yay! it to work. Like my first try. And I was like, how did I do that? I you need to do it again. So I'm going to do lots of things that are going to force me to practice magic rings because okay. I've got to get good at these. But this is a sunflower. So this is called the Cozy Days Daisy Blanket. So this is, it's a daisy, but it's a sunflower. It's the same thing. There are millions of mm. daisy sunflower granny squares online that you can pull up. But this is the Cozy Days Daisy Blanket. So she makes a bunch of these squares, stitches them together together. For it makes a blanket. Blanky. She uses big chunky yarn. I just used regular red heart acrylic <laughs> yarn because that's what I have. I have tons of it. Yeah. So this is um a, a free crochet pattern oh, brought yay. to you by All About Amy. All About Amy. That's her website. It's allaboutamy.com if you want to go to her website. This is a free pattern, so you can jump on there. And then she also does a wonderful YouTube video that we will link in our show notes. So if you jump over to podbean.com, you can see our show notes and then also see this wonderful pattern that she does. It's really simple to follow, especially if you know how to do magic rings. But basically what you do is you do a magic ring and then you do 
12 single crochets, join them together, do another round of 12 single crochets. I could do that. So what I've done in the past is I've done just a round of double crochets. Ah. So that's how I did my other thing. But I mean, you can do two rounds of single. It kind of makes it tighter if you right. want to do that in a more solid middle. So I would, you know, it's, it's you. a good way to do it. Up to you, however you want to do it. But the main thing is to make the flower is that you're doing clusters in each one in the top of each one of those 12, right? right? So, what so do you I have a cluster, cluster of three. So it's crochet three doubles together. Oh, easy. Right? That makes a cluster stitch. That is oh, called a cluster stitch. cool. So it's three together, chain three. Three together, chain three. So oh. you do that 12 times all the way around. That's it. After you get your center done. I can done. do that. That's what makes the petals. <gasps> And then when oh. you're doing the next round can just be like a leaf pattern background or it can just be the main blanket. So that's what I did here was just the main blanket. So I used green and then it's three crochet or three doubles mm -hmm. chain two, three doubles. And that makes your corner because we're going oh, from around yep. to a corner. Right, right. And then in the next chain three space, you're going to do three half doubles. And then in the next chain three space, it's three half doubles. And then you're going to make another corner. So it's three doubles, chain two, three doubles. I could do this. Right? It's really simple. So wow. you're going into each of the chain three spaces. And the main thing is you want to make sure you're doing corners. So mm -hmm. it's going to be three doubles, chain two, three doubles. And that's what makes it Got a it. square. Got it. square, yeah. yeah. And then the final round of it was just you're going to double crochet in every single double crochet and then you're going to make your corners where it's just two doubles chain two two doubles for the next corner that is so cool yeah it's a really simple pattern but it's a really beautiful little way to make a, a daisy yeah and then when i was doing my blanket i just added on you can keep making these squares as big as you want so i mean sorry not my blanket when i was making my bag mm. i did a row of alpine after this and then you know just kind of kept making it bigger and bigger until i got it the size that i wanted so yeah that's it it's a really Easy. simple Little, Yay. little sunflower. I love it. Sunflower. <laughs> so, yeah. I could cute. do that. You and it's adorable. So, so, you're going to do that. Are you trying to make another bag or are you going to do a blanket for this one? I don't know yet. Ooh, okay. We'll see. It okay. might be, I don't know. <laughs> Her wheels are turning. There's so many things that you can do with these. I so, like granny yeah. squares. I need to do them. I have not done them yet. Granny squares are so versatile. You can do all kinds of things with right. these granny squares. But I think I might make another bag. Yeah. Um, but I think I might make a different bag than the oh. than the one that I did before. A little, you're, you're changing it up. Yeah. The, okay. the one bag that you sent me that used, I think, like maybe 12 of these. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So there's another, there's another bag. There's so many different bags. So many bags. Bags. So many ways to use granny squares. Or a vest. I always think of like I'm an old lady. I'm gonna have a vest one day with these. Yeah, you will. <laughs> but it's cool. Or pants. Pants. Yeah. How cute would this be in pants? pants Sunflower up. pants. I love it. It'd be so cute. It'd be really cute. I love it. <laughs> we gotta make pants someday because well, we wear lots. We of keep pants talking about that. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> make some pants. Okay. Well, that's all I have for stitch time. That's beautiful. I'm so ready for story time because I have no idea what it's gonna be. Yay. Be so exciting. So are you right. ready for story time? It's story time. Yay! So as the title of this podcast will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the title is. No, nope, not yet. That. This is Paranormal Events After Natural Disasters. Oh, cool. <laughs> This so, is going to be fun. Yeah. There's only a few. I only got a few. I'm sure there's more, but there is the, uh, the internet has so much about this one specific event that I'll go into the end. And I mean, natural disasters in general are scary as all hell, right? Like, yeah, they, they scare me a lot. Well, yeah. Cause it's like, <laughs> they come out of nowhere. They come out of nowhere. It's yeah. a natural, natural disaster. disaster. The like, earth is, what? is mad and it's going to yeah wreak havoc. And so the first event, I've only got three today, okay? Okay. The first one is Hurricane Katrina. Oh, I know. New yeah. Orleans. Yeah. Katrina. Yeah. So we visited New Orleans pretty recently. Right. In remember? the hospitals episode. And exactly. that was Hurricane, Hurricane Katrina. Katrina. Yeah. Yeah. So already off the bat, we know a little bit about it. But let's go into the details exactly what happened. So late 
August of 2005. Yes. Yeah. Various tropical depressions merged together in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, spawning a large tropical storm, Hurricane Katrina, that tore through Florida and seemed to dissipate, which made everyone relax. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until it doubled down and intensified. So Hurricane Katrina turned into a Category 5 hurricane and caught yeah. everyone off guard in New Orleans on August of 29th. Sadly, due to engineering flaws in their flood protection levees, floods ripped through New Orleans and it tied as the most expensive tropical cyclone on record. The other was Hurricane Harvey in 2017. Roughly 80% of the city was inundated for weeks and people were stranded without food, shelter, or basic necessities. And alligators ran rampant. Oh my Remember gosh. Remember those videos? That was crazy. Ugh, alligators. Once rescue efforts happened and streets weren't flooded anymore, they estimated 1,200 deaths. But Dude, yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. But an already pretty spooky town full of souls living and the dead, Hurricane Katrina left even more of a paranormal imprint on New Orleans. So a very well-known tragic story was that of Vera Smith. Did you ever hear about this? I don't think so. Cool. Okay. Smith was born in Mexico, grew up in Texas, then moved to New Orleans in her prime. A mother of two daughters, neighbors knew her as a quirky, boisterous woman that was even louder and even more obnoxious when drinking. And that happened a lot. Oh, no. But she fit the New Orleans vibe as she loved fancy clothes, costume jewelry, and had a wig for each day of the week. <laughs> That sounds very... Yeah, uh, New Orleans, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She lived in a small duplex with her common-law husband. I think she was married. Did I say if she was married three times, I think? No, <laughs> yeah. she was married three times. She was married three times. She sounds awesome. Yeah. Living her best life. Thousands of people fled from New Orleans when Katrina bore down, but not Smith. Now, either on or around August 29th, when Hurricane Katrina was still pounding New Orleans... Neighbors found 65-year-old Vera Smith lying dead on Magazine Street. Oh, Vera, no. Yeah. It's not 100% what exactly happened to Smith, but everyone believed she was struck down by a vehicle that was stolen since people were looting. It was crazy. <gasps> oh. Yeah. But, another but, but. the autopsy report uh, later showed no injuries to confirm a hit and run, so her manner of death is still undetermined and mysterious. Vera, what happened to you? You don't know. Even more sad, Smith's decaying body lay in the street for four days. <gasps> and Why? like the, the temperatures were about 90 to 100 yeah. degrees. So she, just decaying body just laying in the middle of the road. Why? Because rescue services were so busy they couldn't get to her body. They were just oh, doing man. so much other things. They're like, well, she's dead. We can't do much about it. But thankfully, neighbors that didn't even know each other got together and moved her body to the sidewalk in front of a vacant space, placed b bricks around her, and put a tarp on top. And on the tarp, they wrote, here lies Vera. God help us. Oh, my gosh. That, you have a picture of I it. I have a picture. <gasps> That's sad. That's sad. So it's unclear exactly when Smith's body was finally recovered, but in 2006, her body was cremated and her ashes were spread over her parents' graves in Texas. And years later, the vacant space where Smith's lifeless body had spent a long time was purchased and a two-story restaurant called Charcoal's Gourmet Burger Bar was erected. It opened in 2012. But then in December of 2013, a story came out and people were talking about all the strange things that were happening at Charcoal's. They sort of joked about it, but when equipment started malfunctioning, they believed Vera Smith's spirit was still lingering. Oh, Vera. Yep. The restaurant was said to have a very bad vibe and had very cold spots. The lights would flicker on and off, and even specters were spotted reflected in the windows. Dude. Yeah. The owner had someone build a memorial at the restaurant for Vera Smith. Some said to help exercise her spirit, but the owner claimed it was just to help remember Vera Smith. But in 2018, Charcoal's closed down and Deanie's Seafood Kitchen opened in the same building. To ensure the building remained calm, local artists created another memorial for Smith outside of the new seafood restaurant. But locals still claim there are strange things and bizarre encounters that happened in and around Deanie's. 
Uh, is it Vera? I think so. I think it's Vera. She, I mean, that was pretty sad. Uh, yeah. I mean, I can't even imagine. I mean, I'm glad the people that were there tried to do what they could and tried to be respectful so that she just wasn't laying there. But In like, the street. Yeah. Seriously, we don't know how she died. Nope. They think it was a hit and run, but right. who knows? Who knows? And then she's left there for days. For days. Oh, Vera. Poor body. And she was like a pretty boisterous person. Yes. So I totally imagine her being like, God, yeah. Man, Where, like, why is my body still here? Yeah. What happened? Yeah. Her soul is like yelling at yep. everybody like, figure this out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So poor Vera Smith. Yeah. Oh, man. Now we move on to a structure that was built atop a cemetery. Yes. Nothing wrong can come uh. from that, right? <laughs> Why, people? Why? I feel like this is something that we have to <laughs> address. Always. So many times. So the Superdome, where yes. the NFL Saints team plays in the fall, was built over banded Giroud Street Cemetery. Oh, my god! <laughs> Did you know that? I didn't no. know that. Yeah. So this is... And, and oh, okay. And this is New Orleans. Like, yep. this, you can't... You don't bury people. Everything's like above ground because it's yeah. it's below sea level. So exactly. if you dig down, you're going to hit water. Yeah. You can't do that. So everybody's above ground yep. when they're buried. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> why would you? Why would you choose oh that? Oh, my gosh. Well, let's get into it. So the cemetery had been visited by grave robbers many times, as you're mentioning, yeah. right? Vagrants had set fire to crypts. And by the time the mayor condemned the cemetery in 1945, farm animals were wandering the cemetery in and out of collapsed tombs and open vaults. Oh, my gosh. So this cemetery was not really, like, used very well. It was not maintained? Well. No, and... no, not at all. Mm -mm. The remains of those intended, or in turn, sorry, were moved to other cemeteries but in the 1960s when the stadium was still being built remains were discovered in the parking garage oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't move all the bodies it's poltergeist nope. i know yeah. it is not cool now, even with that juju, Hurricane Katrina made matters even spookier. Over 20,000 people congregated inside the Superdome, where miserable people who either lost their homes or were seeking shelter dealt with large heaping piles of garbage, putrid waste everywhere, and everyone was starving. Yeah. Remember that? I do. I 100% I I, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. It's poor place, poor people. Gloria Guy, who was interviewed on DailyBeast.com, claims she witnessed the disturbing event in the Superdome. I don't know if you've heard this one either. A guy was so tired with everything that he went over to the banister, jumped off, and killed himself. <gasps> Oh, that was no. pretty big in the news. So it, it was only he was the intentional death. He committed suicide. There was two elderly people that died in the Superdome. Uh, They're just old. So but sad. Yeah, man. it was pretty intense. Years later, a $220 million renovation took place and the Superdome was rejuvenated. But even with an updated stadium, people claimed to see ghosts and spirits well yeah anytime you do construction that's right it disturbs everybody. we talked about that yeah. anytime you're in, yeah remodeling yeah there you go they'll report that they were talking to someone they could clearly or they could clearly see but then they would walk away into the walls or up and vanish oh no <laughs> i would not want that Reminds me of Ghostbusters. How much would that like mess with you if you're having a conversation with somebody? You're like, oh, that's such a cool person. I'm so yeah. glad I met them. Yes. And they walk through <laughs> and a wall and you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and they're dead. <laughs> you're that like, oh, so they're so fun. Football me football so much. Yep, no. I mean, I have like social anxiety enough as it is. <laughs> so like I can <laughs> Imagine the person that you like is dead. No. Oh. Wah, wah, wah. oh, that would be the worst. Like if they were like cute and you're hitting <laughs> on them and you're like, oh. And nope. Oh, man. <laughs> My chances just diminished. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, some claim to feel intense cold spots in the Superdome and inexplicable gusts of wind happen. Some will hear disembodied footsteps in empty corridors Woo! and also see doors opening and closing on their own. When people take photos in the dome, some will even claim to see mysterious orbs or mists. Ooh. Yeah, so Superdome, I, if I ever go over Home there. Home of the Saints. Yep. How funny is that? I want to so go watch religious. that. Yeah. 
Now on to the Lower Ninth Ward. This area of New Orleans was once a burgeoning old line neighborhood where famous people lived, like Fats Domino ah. and members of the Neville fa musical family. Oh, cool. Yeah. But this area was hit hard by Hurricane Katrina, where only 37% uh, of households were able to return to the neighborhood. So that means 63% were just completely wiped off the map. Or oh, my gosh. Just dead. Yeah. 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 Buildings oh. just crumbled. That's so sad. Yeah. Yeah, the rest were destroyed. Today, most of the Lower Ninth Ward looks like a war zone. Buildings are still empty, broken shells, and homes dilapidated. What's spooky is now people will hear cries for help in the darkness. Nope. No one is around. Nope. Roads that are covered in layers of river mud and dust will have the sounds of children's laughter. Oh, no. Yeah. Even though no more children live in the area. Oh, I don't like that one. Nope. <laughs> Spookiest of all are the 911 calls that come from this area. And when police arrive to the home or building that made the call, there's no one to be found. As the homes what? are either completely destroyed or the lot is empty where the building should be. No! So beyond the grave, 911 calls. That's crazy! Yeah. Oh my gosh! <laughs> That's so crazy. Yeah, I don't like that. And there's like... Because 911 records all these, so there's like they have the voice. evidence yeah. of a non Someone's calling in for this house. Wow. That's crazy. Nope. Oh, man. You're going to hear a common theme about that, Nolans, though. Nolan's. You crazy, man. Yeah. Next, we're going to move on to the 2004 tsunami that hit Thailand, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, and India. This is crazy. So December 26, 2004, people around the world flocked to the beaches of Thailand, Sri Lanka, and Indonesia for a tropical getaway. Then at 7.59 a.m., a, a 9.1 magnitude earthquake, mind you, the largest ever recorded, right. tore through an underwater fault in the Indian Ocean and caused massive devastation. First to be hit with a massive tsunami was the tip of Sumatra, Indonesia, closest to the epicenter. The city of Banda Aceh had about 320,000 people, but the tsunami killed about 100,000 men, women, and children. Oh, that's like a third. That's a third. Hashtag because now. Yes, <gasps> we did it. Isn't that sad, though? That's, that's a lot so of people, that's a third a of that population. The waves on the ocean were traveling about 500 miles per hour and was upon the coastal towns of Phuket and Phong Nha in about an hour and a half. Despite the amount of time the earthquake hit and the now large tsunami raging towards Thailand, locals and tourists were unaware. Tourists were still swimming in the ocean, even though the waves were receding. So anytime a wave recedes, everybody get out of the get water. Out. That get is, out. Yeah, that is, yeah. that's the scary part that you, you that's a tsunami. About 5,400 people were killed, including 2,000 foreign tourists. Oh my gosh. Then only an hour later, the massive waves struck Chennai near the southeastern coast of India and the waves pushed so far in that it killed more than 10,000 people. And sadly, mostly women and children were killed because most of the men were out fishing. Oh, sad. sad. Even more sadly, a brutal tsunami struck the island nation of Sri Lanka, where more than 30,000 people were killed or swept away by the waves. Man. So many people. Hundreds of thousands of people were left homeless. What's crazy is that over 5,000 miles away, tourists swimming off the coast of South Africa were caught in rogue waves and swelling seas, and they woefully drowned. So it reached all the way out to that area, too. That's insane. Yeah. Just That's the massive. So huge. Massive. On history.com, Vasily Titov stated, In earthquakes, a certain number of people die, but many more are injured. It's completely reversed with tsunamis. Almost no injuries because it's such a di difficult disaster to survive. <sighs> So yeah, living on the on the ocean on the on the waterfront is yeah scary yeah with the tsunamis yeah so yeah uh. yeah. 
Uh, on the Andaman coast of Thailand, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, and Andaman, Andaman, we'll say that. Thais would retrieve corpses and carry them all to the temples. Oh my God. Yeah, hundreds of bodies were housed in the temples for months waiting <gasps> for the largest international forensics team to identify them. Oh my gosh. Oh my heart. Right? My heart. That's so sad. In the aftermath, reports left and right were coming out of mostly Thailand that volunteers were too scared to search for bodies due to the highly superstitious nature of the Thai culture. But it's because some volunteers searching in, I think it's Fifi Island, I'm going to say, P-H-I, P-H-I. Okay. And Cal Lak reported that they heard laughing and singing on the beach. <gasps> Upon investigation, all they found was darkness and empty sand. Oh. So they're still hearing these echoes of people. Like, yeah, having a good time, having yep. a great beach day. Yep. Because they were just wiped out yeah. so quickly. Oh, man. And again, in Kowalak, a fa local family complained about their phone ringing off the hook throughout the day and night. When they answered it, they swore they heard the voices of their relatives and loved ones that passed in the tsunami, pleading the family to help rescue them from the flames in the crematorium. Oh, my gosh. Constant calls. Oh. <laughs> oh. They think they're still alive, I think. Oh. That's, yeah, they didn't have a proper, probably. Well, it probably happened so fast. Yes. They didn't. They had, like, no realization. Yeah, you're going to hear that a lot. That's very common. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That is terrifying. Yes. I can't even imagine being on the receiving end of that no. phone call. I'd just be like, stop, please. Yeah. You you didn't make it. I'm sorry. Right. And you have to keep constantly telling them that. Oh. Ah! Dude. Okay. That that has my wheels going right now. I'm going to like take a moment okay. to talk. Because Good. an upcoming episode, so watch out for this. Here's a little spoiler. We're going to talk Ooh. about like near-death experiences where a, a lot of stories come from where people feel like they have the choice to return to their body. Oh, and there's, yeah. there's one story of this woman who, I'm not going to do this story, but it's it's on a, um, oh, gosh, what is that? There's a there's a show on Netflix. Oh, okay. Um, oh, yeah. Right? And I talked about this. Yes, it's you wanted like, us to watch the show. Yeah, Near Death, or yeah. I forget what I forget it was called, title. something like that. Yeah. But it's we're, popular. It, yeah, it's yeah. it's a cool Netflix series. Yeah. So they have they have some people that talk about their near death experiences, and there's there's one woman who was in a kayak kayaking kayaking accident. Did I say oh that right? Oh my gosh! Yeah. Okay, kayaking accident, and she was underwater for a half hour. Oh, half an hour for a half hour. They couldn't get her dislodged. She was just stuck in this oh, little that's space. Sad. And then they finally got her body down river. She was purple bloated, like she was gone. gone. And she's talking about her experience of how she was, you know, traveling, or whatever. But then she returned back into. She her came body. back. Yeah. Oh my gosh! She came back, and she can tell the story and tell you all about her travels or whatever half an hour i feel like you'd be brain dead by that point well she was yeah. i mean like she was I'm she had no she oxygen to come back in, in her body for a half an hour yeah and she's fine she kayaks now and like <laughs> nope right isn't I'm that like, an nope, interesting thing uh, people so go back to that's like did. really interesting that maybe these people were having these experiences but how they were able to connect their energies and call and try to get back into their bodies right that is so that's insane sad yeah that they wanted to return to their bodies but this, they they were wiped out too soon and without knowing oh. so that's that's really scary oh my god ah! that is a crazy story nicole yes there's so many though yeah uh, specifically on fifi island again a woman witnessed foreign tourists struggling to escape the sea one year after the tsunami hit. <gasps> oh. So it's that replay. Yeah, that residual. Yeah. Oh. Then a hotel worker claimed to also hear ghosts playing on the beach, similar to the volunteer rescue workers. That's a very common theme. Yeah. Taxi drivers in Phuket were extremely frightened by the paranormal experiences after the tsunami. Specific taxi driver Wiwat Sakulde. Sakulde? That's a say. cool name. Yes. Wiwat. Talk to South Coast Today News regarding his fear of driving at night and definitely will not drive near the beach. 
he and other drivers heard about Lex's encounter. One night, Lex picked up t- seven tourists for a fee of 200 baht, which is about $6 today. That's pretty good. They told him to drive to Kata Beach. He said he drove for a while, but then suddenly his body felt cold and numb. Then he looked around and noticed all the passengers vanished. Uh, seven of them. <laughs> gone. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man. It really frightened him. He said, yeah. I can't get over this. I'm going to have to get a new job. I have a daughter to support, but I'm too scared to go out driving at night. Oh, my gosh. I can. I, I, can, I, I feel I, you, man. I, yeah. I wouldn't want to do it either. I would be a nope on that, yep. too. I got a new job, too. Apologies. I've been pronouncing the word wrong. P-H-U-K-E-T is Phuket. Sorry, guys. So on a beach in Phuket. A foreign woman's scream echoed through the night from the wreckage of a hotel that was badly hit. And a security guard at the same site quit his job because he couldn't handle the ghostly cries of help me over and over again Uh, and the apparitions he witnessed. Oh, my gosh. That's just it's just that would chill me. Yeah. Another story passed around Phuket is that a foreign female ghost that walks along the shoreline calling for her child. Oh, no. Oh. Mm, so sad. On the Andaman coast, many Thai people believe that nearly all of the 5,400 souls that were killed in the tsunami still haunt the area, even after the debris has been cleared and reconstruction restru- has started. 5,000. 5,000 souls. They think that, that they're still, still there. Still roaming around. Oh, my gosh. That's yeah. so much. <laughs> Now, many Thai and many Thai people of all faiths believe that if people die in pain or by accident, that their spirit remains lost until they understand what happened and then they can finally move on. They also believe that the unsettled spirits could lead to bad luck. And most believe ghosts resides in tall trees. Oh, so, oh. So they might be, if there's a lot of large trees around, that is, that's like, where so they're so going to the be lingering. Are gonna be hanging out in the yeah. tall trees. Oh, that's creepy. That's their belief, yeah. Woo! Only until the body is cremated or blessed by a loved one that they can move on. So until then, the soul remains restless and will try to show their family member where they are and appear nightly. Oh. Many other tourists from neighboring countries share this common belief, so they had stayed far away close at the, at the, the aftermath. Local Buddhist and Chinese monks held rituals to lay the wandering spirits of tsunami victims to rest. Yeah, I'm like, if I had, if I had those beliefs and I had a family member that, you know, passed away, passed away during that, I but would so suddenly I would go and try to help. Them. Right, right. Because yeah. you want them to move on. Yeah. Make sure they know that oh, it's OK. Gosh. But yeah, it's just My I heart. think people are saying that because of these religious beliefs um, and, and their superstitions that they're still hearing all of this. Yeah. To them. Because so. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure whole families were wiped out at yeah. that point. So. so many people. So many people. Oh. This was a big one. And Banda at. Uh, Che, the capital of Indonesia, the residents that lived on the, oh my gosh, Krengdoi, Krengdoi, sure, river, <laughs> told stories that they heard cries of help from beneath the water every evening for two weeks after oh. the tsunami hit. Two weeks. Soldiers had located dozens of bodies from the debris-filled waterway. South Coast Waterway reported that Adek, a 22-year-old who recently graduated from uh, university, was on his way to pray at a mosque located on the river's banks when he noticed two spirits. Oh. One of the spirits he followed and watched as it went into a home but faded into a shadow. Mm. Adek then went to the home's door, found it locked, and no one was there and no one was home. Oh, he's just going home. Yes. Oh, man. Adek believes the spirits are not settled because they haven't found their families. Oh. Sad. In Kalmunai, eastern Sri Lanka villagers claim they still heard voices shouting for help. Reverend Clement An- Anadas, Anadas stated that they, the villagers hear the voices loudest when they are closer to the sea. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Psychologist Dr. Wanlop oh, Piamanuthan yeah, 
Sorry, guys. I'm going to no, ruin a lot of words. You're doing so much better than <laughs> I would. It's so, you're, you're Oh, fine. this is fun. So Piyama Nutham. Yep. States the reports of ghosts and eerie happenings is just a result of post-traumatic stress disorder and that most stories popped up about 10 days after the tsunami struck. He believes this is when the horror of loss and devastation fam finally kicks in at that time and then spreads to those who are not immediately affected. And because most of the souls lost were foreign, dying in such a tragic manner, their brains are going to create ghosts. But then we move on to our next tragic natural disaster where there are even more paranormal sightings and exactly the same things happen. Oh, wow. So how is it all human to you know nature to have this ptsd or where you're like reliving it and so you think yeah. that it's like a reality thing yep no i think that that's somebody's way to explain away the paranormal they can't explain what's happening because you can't you know right they're like oh it's your brain making all these you're so like, stressed out you're yeah. seeing things and hearing things but i feel like i feel like we don't <laughs> But then how do you explain all those phantom phone calls from 911? Seriously, and, right? Yeah. So, I mean, if you have evidence like that. Now how can you explain it away? Yeah. I get it. I feel you. No, I'm on your side. So, I just had yeah. to throw that in just in case. I know. Got some skeptics out there. Skeptic. I'm sure. The last one we're going to touch up on today is the great Tohoku earthquake and tsunami. This is the reason why I wanted to do this this episode yeah. so march 11th 2011 at 2 46 p.m a 9.0 under sea uh. mega thrust earthquake struck roughly 45 miles east of the oshika peninsula of the tohoku region in japan the earthquake registered as the fourth most powerful earthquake recorded in the world and the most powerful earthquake ever recorded in japan and apparently this earthquake was so powerful that it shifted the earth on its axis. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what it's one what? website said. Yeah. Oh. So big. The, uh, <laughs> yeah. I was like, maybe it barely, it, maybe not. it shifted a tiny bit, but I don't know. The earthquake caused powerful tsunami waves that reached roughly 133 feet in height when it reached Miyako in Tohoku's Iwate Prefecture. That's a really big. Then, when it reached Sendai, it is said that waves traveled at 435 miles per hour and up to six miles inland. Six miles inland. That's crazy. That's far. That is far. Residents of Sendai only had no more than 10 minutes of warning to evacuate, but when some reached evacuation sites, those were washed away. So you oh. think it's safe. You're like, oh, I, I made it. Nope. No, it's you gone. can't get out. Nope. Oh. Over 10 evacuation sites were swept away. And you've got to be like in such a panic if you only have 10 minutes. Oh, to yeah. Like you had to get, get out. out. Yeah. You can't because people are going to crush miles together. Too? Yeah. There's no way. Nope. I remember when my parents were evacuated, I think for Harvey because they live yes. in Houston. Yeah. So when they were evacuated for Harvey, they were going to Austin, which is normally... Mm, like about a three hour drive or something three oh, or four wow. hours it's not that far yeah um but it took them over 12 hours because, because everybody it, was because leaving everyone was leaving so many people even though they had opened up both sides of the freeway oh, which is so the i-45 freeway they right. opened both sides out of the city it That's still crazy. didn't matter like it still took and, you know, they kept having to pull over to get gas. There was no gas anymore. Uh, Such a panic to get out. 12 hours. This is why some people, That's I, I kind of side sometimes with those crazy ap apocalyptic people where they have everything prepared. Yeah. I wish I was like that. <laughs> but I'm not. <laughs> no. Not, I am not that. No. Like, I, I would don't love think that. that far ahead. No. I'm a moment to moment kind yeah. of girl. I'm not a planner. I can make planner. a list for you pretty I'm, easily. I'm not a planner. <laughs> I will have everything ready for you. The tsunami also caused meltdowns of three reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Oh, and, no. Yeah, and the discharge of radioactive water. Uh. Hundreds of thousands of people had to evacuate from their homes due to this, along with the structure of the, uh, uh, the plant exploding due to electric generators running out of fuel, then causing a heat buildup as well as a hydrogen gas buildup. There's a lot more science to it. That's very, very, very touching the surface of what happened. But basically, the nuclear reactor plant there, just like, you don't want to be near it. Yeah. It's no. crazy. Yeah. I was watching this documentary about it that even today, 
that even if you try to go in, uh, people, the radioactive radio, uh, radioactivity, activity. <laughs> the radioactivity is so strong that a human would die in five minutes. Holy bajillion. It's still that bad. They're, they're estimating about 40 more years before someone can safely go around that area. Wow. It's that bad. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. The, yeah. So they had to expand evacuations of up to 12 miles of the power plant. Similar to the tsunamis in 2004, they were more deadly than the earthquake itself in Japan. Entire towns were wiped out from the tsunami hit areas. Sea walls that were built to protect the, from tsunamis were not high enough. They yeah. thought they were good. Yeah. They weren't. Rescue efforts were difficult, too, due to the weather. When the tsunami hit, it was only zero degrees Celsius outside or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Right. It was snowing. Snow. It was freezing. freezing. Yeah. Oh, my God. Ishinomaki, that's where it was mostly that cold, and that's where they estimated the most deaths were. Cities in the Iwate Prefecture, the Fukushima Prefecture, and the Miyagi Prefecture were either completely destroyed or heavily damaged. So all these cities and towns were just wiped out. In 2021, official numbers were reported. There were 19,759 deaths. Six, oh my gosh. Yeah, 6,242 injured. And to this day, 2,553 people are still missing. Oh, that is so many people. So many people. Soon after the devastation of losing so many loved ones in the blink of an eye, many Japanese people told stories of seeing neighbors, loved ones, and people that had passed in the tsunami. Most were frightened, but some saw it as a normal occurrence. The mass amount of ghost sightings spurred books, gathering tales from people. Most famous is Richard Lloyd Perry's Ghosts of the Tsunamis. I think most talked about now was an episode of Unsolved Mysteries featured uh. the tsunami ghosts in 2020. Yet, they didn't really relay just how many people were seeing spirits. So the show does cite the work of sociology graduate student Yuka Kudo of Tohokue Gakuen University. She did a research paper where she asked over 100 taxi drivers if they experienced any spooky encounters in the aftermath of the tsunami. Seven of them did come forward with their stories. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Some were even unfazed uh, by the sightings. Yeah. They're like, of course, yep, whatever. Yep, that happens. Oh, my gosh. One story is of a woman who entered a taxi cab wearing a very warm jacket and was completely drenched, but it was in the middle of summer. Ah! Uh, she asked to go to, to the Miyagi region, which was completely destroyed in the tsunami. The taxi driver explained that the area was in ruins. And after she was notified of this, the stranger, the strange passenger looks at the driver and asked, have I died? <gasps> no! His blood turned cold. And as he turned to look at her, she was gone. <gasps> oh, my gosh. So, well, okay. Good. <laughs> Yeah. Right uh, side is maybe he helped her move on because maybe she realized, she oh, know. maybe I died. Yeah. And oh, wow. So n maybe she knows now. Oh, my gosh, Nicole. Yeah. An Unsolved Mysteries Kudos Professor Kanabishi explained one story about a man that was picked up wearing a heavy coat as well. Oh. He was around 20 years old and the driver felt something odd from the passenger. He asked to be taken to a mountain destination called Hio, Hio Riyama. By the time they arrived to the plateau of the summit, the sun had already set. He stopped, turned around, and the man had vanished. Of course he had. Gone. Ah. Apparently, there were physical records from the trips, so they could tell they like went out to these places, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, so it corroborates the taxi driver's stories. Whoa. One driver stated, "It is not strange to see a ghost here. If I encounter a ghost again, I will accept it as my passenger." Oh. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They're just so unfazed by like, it. Whatever. They're like, "Yeah, it's people." I'll, and and usually, I didn't put this in. They'll pay for the fares, obviously. <laughs> They're like, we'll do it for them. They'll, they'll drive these ghosts around. They disappear. They're like, oh, I guess I have to pay the fare now. And so they'll pay it for them. So they pay their, wait, hold on. The taxi driver, the taxi pays, driver pays the fare of these ghosts. 
what yeah. wonderful people. Yeah. <laughs> just like, can you imagine? I was just thinking like if I was a taxi driver and I had a ghost and I drove them like somewhere far, a far fair. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they just disappeared. I'd be like, God damn yeah. it. <laughs> Not another one. Right. I'm like, nope. man, That's... I just wasted so much time. <laughs> and I don't get any money right? for that. No, but uh. maybe they are. Maybe they are kind of helping them. Yeah. On, I right? mean, I, I guess I have to be more benevolent in that and be like, <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm helping them transition. There you go. The next I'm driving phase. them to the next place. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. But it's scary. Well, yeah. good no. on those taxi drivers, man. <laughs> They're better people than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, man. But the professor theorizes these drivers are just going through PTSD, like I've mentioned before. Oh, goodness. But who knows? But here are more stories. Okay. Some reported seeing cues of ghostly figures waiting patiently outside rubble, which had previously been a supermarket before it was devastated by the tsunami. Whoa. So oh, they're still in line like, for their food. Groceries. Yep. Just like the 2004 tsunami, one town's fire station was receiving multiple calls to assist <gasps> families. See, calls. Yep. When the crew traveled to the home, it was completely destroyed by the tsunami and void of all living beings. They would then pray for those who lived and died there. As I mentioned, this happened multiple times. But presently, the phone call ceased because I think they were able to go and pray for these families and let them, and then let they were able to move. rest. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's so good. See, and then we have like records of this. We have records. We have phone calls. Yes. And this is a completely different country on the different, totally different, different side different of the country. world. Yep. So yeah, this is not in people's minds. No. The, I this hate that happening. excuse. Yeah. Spirits are still trapped. Yeah. Not figuring it out. A refugee home in Onagawa reported a ghostly woman who regularly visited the house for tea time. Oh. She would sit down, drink tea, then when she would leave, her cushion would be soaked in seawater. Oh, okay. <laughs> so more physical evidence. More physical evidence. As a shop owner, I'd be so annoyed. I'd be like, man, <laughs> stop soaking my chair. Yeah. They probably but they, aren't. They They're probably very benevolent. Yeah, yeah, they had okay. a specific one for her. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah. I would like figure that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, man. That's Father crazy. yeah, father of two, Shinichi Yamada, was able to escape the tsunami that destroyed his home. Later, he salvaged two Buddhist statues from the wreckage. He brought them back to the temporary housing where he was living, but then unexplainable things started to happen to him and the family. First, the two children fell ill unexpectedly. I, I kind of wrote my notes this may be explainable because it was like tsunami times and like yeah. <laughs> things were happening. Yeah. So they fell ill. Okay. They yeah. were saying that was unexpectedly. But then a strange chill seemed to follow the family throughout the house. Then Yamada said at least a couple times when lying in bed, he felt as if something or someone was walking across him, stepping across no, his chest. No, I don't like it. If I'm sleeping, leave, leave me alone. alone right? <laughs> don't do it. He felt hopeless until he turned to an exorcist, which <gasps> many other people had done in such desperate times. I bet. Kansho Aizawa helped the father along with the countless others after the tsunami. She said she claimed to have seen many apparitions herself, from headless ghosts to ones missing hands or legs, and oh. some were completely cut in half. Oh, no. She explained, people were killed in so many different ways during the disaster, and they were left like that in limbo. So it takes a heavy toll on us we see them as they were when they died wow uh. after yamada turned to the exorcist he set up a shrine for the two buddhist statues and regularly prays for them he feels the spirits that were haunting him were able to rest in peace oh that's good Yes. Another exorcist that was on the Unsolved Mystery Show and interviewed extensively by Perry for his book in Buddhist Pri is Buddhist Priest, Reverend Tayo Kaneda. His temple is 50 kilometers from Tohoku's coast and performed over 200 funeral services within weeks after the tsunami. But he realized so many people were overcome with grief. And in Japanese culture, it is frowned upon to cry or show grief in public because to them, it is a sign of selfishness. This, this oh. culture, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. So therefore, internalizing their trauma. 
Kaneda believed. Shove it down. Right? Shove it down. Kaneda believed. healthy. I know, right? Uh, he believed that if he could just talk to most of these people, it would help them cope with their grief. So he set up Cafe de Monku up and down the coast. And Monku in Japanese stands for complaint. So oh, complaint cafe. So I like it. To it. Out of the cafe, many told their ghost sightings to Reverend Kaneda, and many also asked for exorcisms. Wow. A man named Takashi Ono, name change for privacy purposes, lived miles from the coastline, but it was where the worst of the disaster had occurred. Ono stayed away from the disaster zone for months and finally came around to see the damage. He went back home, had dinner with his family, but afterwards he went into his backyard and started rolling in the mud, speaking in a guttural, aggressive way. What happened? He spooked his family badly, but then the next day he had no recollection of what happened. Uh oh. This happened for three more days. Oh no, what happened? He was possessed. That's when Reverend Kaneda paid him a visit and helped him clear the possession. Oh my gosh. So he was he had something happening to him daily. Yeah. Didn't remember it. Oh, that's and so... so they called the exorcist. Wow. Yeah. And he was able to clear him. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Next, a nurse named Rumiko came to Reverend Kaneda several weeks after the tsunami. Her nor her family were personally affected by it, but she suddenly felt presences around her. Oh. Yeah. It got worse when she claimed she felt something enter her. <gasps> yeah. No! She became very distraught and family concerned as she no longer was acting like herself. Uh oh. Kaneda wanted to directly address the spirit that was inside the nurse, and that then she was began to speak in a voice very different from her own. The oh. spirit spoke for a total of three hours. Oh, dude! Giving the story of her life. <gasps> so it was this entity that was a divorcee oh. who ran away from her new family. She got remarried, had a new family that didn't want her. Oh no! Yeah. So she ended up diving into the seedy nightlife and became a prostitute, but <gasps> felt even more isolated and depressed. She ended up killing herself, but no one knew, and she was unmourned. So she uh, was a restless spirit. Yeah. But Reverend Can Kaneda led her into the light with Buddhist prayers. So he was able to help her. Oh, I like Reverend Kaneda. Yeah, he's, he's awesome. Sweet. But three days later, Rubiko returned, still troubled as she felt another spirit nearby trying to enter her. Oh, wow. Yeah, so she has. So she's like a conduit. Yep. She's got, yeah. She's, everyone kind of like knows portal. where she is. Yeah. So uh, Kaneda suggested allowing the spirit in and then Kaneda was uh, talking to a sailor who died in World War II. Oh, yeah. okay. So a very old spirit. Yeah. But then over the next several weeks, about 25 different spirits that were killed in the tsunami spoke through Rumiko. So they Weird. all were like, oh, she's there. So all these tsunami victims. One man had committed suicide when he found out both his daughters drowned. Another spirit was worried that his wife, who had survived, might try to end her own life. Aww. So they were coming out left and right, yeah. talking to Kaneda. Well, I mean, I'm glad that they kind of had this conduit, and then they had the the priest that was able to just help them through it really right. quick. I mean, I feel like the, that pair saved a lot of souls. Exactly, and they think the same thing, which is so really sweet. So that's sweet. Yeah. That warms my heart. Yes. It's a good, good, That's a good ending, one. Right? Yes. Rumiko thankfully learned how to control the access of these spirits to her body, and eventually the visitation stopped. Her and her fiance left the area immediately after. Oh. So thankfully, yeah, she learned how to do that. It's just like six cents. Yeah. I mean, it's good. She needed to be able to have her life back. Yes. But like, I'm happy for the work that they were able to do. Exactly. Accomplish. And I'm happy that she was able to move forward and have her own life as right, well. Yeah, right, right. That's important. I'm, I don't know if she still sees them. Maybe she says a visitation stop, but who knows? Maybe there she's able just to control that. Now, lastly, okay, what yeah, sparked just my life? She's excited about this one. <laughs> so, as I was saying, this this tsunami disaster in Japan really sparked my interest in this episode because. A long time ago, I came upon these two YouTube videos that uh, really freaked me out. 
Uh-oh. So <laughs> I will put them on our show notes on okay. Podbean, but I want to show Angela what okay. these are. So this is an actual news one. It's moving the houses. It's moving everything. It's just wiping everything out. That's so crazy. You ready for this? Okay. Okay, I'll, sh- I'll point it up. <gasps> what the hell is that? Isn't that crazy? That was amazing. Like, I, I feel like that that was literal evidence of spirits. Yeah. It was evidence of spirits. Like, it was, you guys, it was a ball of mist that condensed itself, and they slowed it way down. So if you watch it, it's hilarious because the helicopter guy <laughs> sounds like he's drunk because yeah. he's like, and then there was the... R-. But you see this mist form together in a ball and then it just moves across the screen really fast yes it's, it's, it's slow down, down this so thing is moving, moving real really fast, fast. You ready it's for a the collection of everybody oh yeah. wow that's so cool okay this one's longer okay. okay so this video real quick to tell people and preface this this was actually taken you'll see it they'll, they'll flash the original link but i pulled this link because they slow it down for you to see it better and this is the first one I've ever seen. And okay. this blew my mind. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Okay, so this is kind of long. So th- this is someone just filming, right? They're, they're filming everything that's going on. Okay, so you see this. They're yelling everybody to get it, you know, back. So they're going to climb higher, I think, at some point here. Yeah, there we go. So now they're up top. They can see better. So keep your eye over here. What the hell was that? Oh, my gosh, you guys. <laughs> this, like, legit takes the form of what you think a ghost looks like from when you were, like, little. It looks like that kind of white sheet kind of a thing. And it has a little bit of a physical form, but then a tail, and it vaporizes into nothing. Where does it go? Where is it going? Is it climbing? Where is it going? What the- it came out of the water. It came out of the water. There yeah, okay. No, it... it, it yeah, it might come out of the water. It kind of comes out of a house, but like it's, it it's a ghost. It's, it's a ghost. what you think of a ghost, this is like the white sheet, boo, <laughs> ghost, but with no other physical form. No other physical form, and, and then, then it, it climbs just, it and it goes up, and then it vaporizes into nothing. And this was so. This was taken oh. from somebody's like camera. Yeah, somebody's like someone's home just movie. filming the they're, tsunami. They're filming the the river is is overflowing and and going up into the houses, and they're like on top of something. They're up in a high structure. And the the mist watch, just watch. rises. Did you see it? Oh, it went so fast. Oh, there's there another one again. in the back. It's the same it's one. It's the same one. So he climbed up here and then. Uh-huh. That's a different mist. Is it? It's, yeah, that's a different same. mist. Because the other one came from lower. That's a yeah, different mist. Yeah, but it mist. climbed up. So we're thinking it climbed up and it's climbing and now it's climbing to higher ground. That's like, a different mist. That's a different one. Look at it. That's a whole other one. <gasps> wow. Nicole. This was what spooked me so much about this whole tsunami. I've watched all this. These are Doesn't legit like ghosts. That's so crazy. So what do you think though? Wow. Like they're coming out of the tsunami. So did this, was this a spirit that had gotten caught up somewhere else and then was trying to climb higher ground thinking it was a person like he, they were still physical form or do you think this was like something else completely? Like, I don't know. I think these are just spirits that are coming up out of the water. So like wherever they came from, that one looked like it was kind of behind the house. Yeah. The one from before looked like it came out of, the water. out of the water. And then this one looks like it's coming up from behind behind the house yeah. so we see it behind the house and go by this other yeah people's building, theories were thinking that it was the same one but if you're thinking it's different, i think it's a cool. different one yeah so there you it's go. a different one because they're coming from different places and the first one dissipated yep that this happens at a different time mm-hmm. Later wow on. that the is spooky so crazy Wow. <laughs> I like don't have anything else to say. That this is crazy. what sparked my interest about all of this. But it's so interesting how like they look like, you know, what sheet ghosts. Sheet ghosts. Yeah. But they move very differently. The, like, yeah. They've yeah. Got, it's very rapid and yeah. then they, you know, just go. But like the first video, crazy. like the one that just comes out and just goes like super fast across yeah. the land. But it's so much I think it's just like 
so much energy that mm-hmm. happens in this natural disaster. Right. And it's water. Yes. And water. Conduit. Yeah. yeah water is a huge conduit. So I think it's, uh, a, a, I don't know, an easier form, but it's sure. an easier transition to, to transfer that energy. Yeah. But that's so crazy, crazy? to just see that, to see the energy, the life force mm-hmm. just arise from that. Wow. You guys have to watch these. It's crazy. And I'm sure there's a million videos of this. And I'm Actually, like, those are the only two I can those find. Those are the only two? Yeah. Okay. But that was that, rich, that. The second one was the one I saw, like I said, years ago. And it blew my mind. And so I, I've been wanting to touch base on this. Oh, no. Cool. Ever since. Yeah, it's crazy. That's so, amazing. There you go. Tell us what you think. Yes, you can email us. I, I'm so shocked. I'm like forgetting to do my thing. Nicole has to prompt me. You can email us at the ominous stitch at gmail.com. If you have any ghost stories of your own that come out of natural disasters or out of anything, we want to hear. So email us and we want to hear your stories. You can also jump over to podbean.com and look up the ominous stitch podcast where you can see these little videos. We'll have links to this as well as all of our show notes from any past episode that you might want to see. Also, there's also. a little button in the upper right corner that says become a patron Woo-hoo. if you feel so moved and you want to join our patron army that we're building right now. Army? <laughs> I love it. I don't know. <laughs> Stitchers. Group. Yeah, group. Yeah. Our, our, our crew. wonderful little community. The Stitch Crew. Hey! <laughs> Cute. I love it. So if you want to join our Stitchers, our stitch crew please stitch crew. uh think about becoming a patron we'd love to have you on there we'll send you stuff we'll give you shout outs Yay. we love our patrons very much and we love hearing from you guys so you can also go into any of our social medias and con- contact us that way send pictures or whatever we have one of our listeners just went to the lumber baron Inn, Yay! and um they've given us permission to post some of the pictures that oh, they good. sent us so we'll okay. we'll send some pictures of one of yes. our patrons that actually one of our patrons was at the lumber That's baron right. Inn too. Yeah. yeah so listener and patron perfect we're both there so we'll we'll uh hook up some of those pictures so you can see what our stitchers are seeing it's but who's so our cool. what's our who's our patrons shout out to to mike hi mike shout out to kate hey kate shout out to Brittany. hey Brittany. yay we love our patrons so if you want to become one become one today please that'd be great yeah that was a crazy story Wasn't time. that insane? My mind is so blown right now. Summer. Okay. We, well, we have one more thing that we got to oh, do. One more thing. And so, ooh, we're going long on this episode, people. <laughs> this is a long I episode. I thought it was going to go short. I know. This is long. <laughs> we're so excited. So we'll, we'll dive into movie time right now. This week's movie review is Sinister. Sinister. Released in 2012 with an IMDb rating of 6.8 stars. The synopsis. A controversial true crime writer finds a box of Super 8 home movies in his new home, revealing that the murder case he is currently researching could be the work of an unknown serial killer whose legacy dates back to the 1960s. Or even farther. Because <laughs> that's Much what should further be. back. Yeah. Um, one quick thing that I have to, have to, have to point out. Yes. Angela. Yes. What do you think of his actual home that they moved back to at the end? Why would you leave <laughs> that house? <laughs> right? How do these people that do nothing, like he's a writer and what well, does he Well, okay. Do? He had a really I famous guess. book. But look at how, it was like a mansion. It was a massive mansion. It but was like, huge. why would you leave? Right? To go do his research. He had to go do his research. Okay. I have issues with <laughs> with Mr. Hawk in right? this movie. What's his name? Ellison Oswald. Oh, I, that's a fun. I didn't even know that was Ellison his last Oswald. <laughs> that's a very writer name. Yes. So I have I have issues with this character. And I have issues. I think you're with supposed the whole to. Movie. Yeah, you're supposed to. But like, dude, right? Obsess much? A little bit. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that was creepy. Yeah. Why move your family in somewhere and then not tell your wife? And it seems like he hated the subject matter that he was yes. writing about because he drank so much <laughs> while he was like, 
Oh my it, gosh. it affected him a lot, but yeah. it, is, it makes money. I think that's the biggest thing. Key. Was, I want money. Yeah. <laughs> lots and lots of money. I know. Yeah. There are other ways to make money. Right. You don't have to like write about true crime. Yeah. But that's what he said. He was like, she's like, why don't you go back to your fiction? He's like, that doesn't, it's not good or something like that. He just didn't like it. But you can also write true crime from your own home, please. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can go visit these places. Right? You don't have to move, your, move family. your whole family. Yeah, and away from their schools. But I guess if he didn't do that, we wouldn't have a movie. So, true that. Yeah. True that. But yeah, so th- when you uh, watch from the beginning, they say King County. And I thought that was like, ooh, is that Seattle? But I don't know for sure. They don't tell you exactly where they are, right? Uh, No, I don't think so. It's it, They were I, doing a map. I had a feeling that it was more in the south. That's somewhere. what I thought, too. But they said yeah. King County. I, like, oh, I think it's but... because of the whole hanging thing. That's why I was probably Oh, I can south. see that. But it's like surrounded by all these trees and things. Yeah, so it's in the forest. I mean, there's a lot of true, true, true. forests in the south, too. That's right. So I don't know. I don't know where they were. Yeah, they didn't. They were talking about the other deaths. Of were the happening like all over the place. Area. So yeah. yeah, there was one in California. One of, yeah, yeah. But I couldn't tell where they were exactly. But anyway, this movie, this was on my, my probably my top 20 horror movies at one point um, because it's I think it's pretty well made. But it it moves really slow, everybody. I don't know if you felt that way. Yeah, it's slow. It's supposed to be that way, though. It's, it's slow and it's really dark yes and I, I was watching it on my phone oh so that's even that harder like, yeah. yeah i'm like i can't see because <laughs> you need anything. to be able to see the details yeah and i couldn't see any of the details yeah. of, like, it's very it's suspenseful so it, yeah. and that's what it, i think that was the, the key word to this movie everybody it's suspense because it's slow they don't talk a lot here and there and it's because you need to k- keep your eyes on the screen and like and it builds an in intensity yeah <laughs> I don't know. I was just angry with with him the whole time. I was like, you're such he's selfish. so yes, yeah. selfish and he's so obsessed. He like didn't tell his wife that he moved them into a murder house. Right? She's like, oh, you didn't move us in two houses away from a crime scene. And like you like, did last time. Yeah. And he's like, and uh, like, apparently he makes enemies because he's that much of a jerk. Yeah. He makes enemies he with everybody. And, and then people. like he watches old interviews that he gave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's so in his head. Of his like one really big, famous, popular yeah. book. That, yeah. His interview. Know, whatever. I could barely listen to my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, I don't want to hear myself. myself. Talk. I cannot watch myself on right? video. Yeah, yeah. So I wouldn't be able to do what he's doing. Yeah, no. Yeah, that's it's weird. So, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. But yeah, so it's funny is he finds those Super Eight videos, right? And he finds the actual camera. He sets up. He's able to watch what's going on, and he watches like. He turns away from the scenes, but it's like, wouldn't you like report this right away? No, he wants to make money. No, yeah, it. it's all about the money. It's yeah. about the greed. He has to make yeah. money. So it's not so like he's not going to turn it into the cops. Like right? he thought about it for a split he second. Did, he called yeah. the cops and then didn't say didn't anything. Say he's anything. like, oh, this is going to be such a massive book. Right. Because he's such a massive a-hole. Well, spoiler alert. He gets it. So it's yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> he learned his learned. lesson. <laughs> okay. Real quick. Look at my dog. I know. <laughs> she's so Got her tongue sticking out. She has her tongue sticking out. She doesn't even like the book or the movie. No, nope, she she was not happy with it. <laughs> but yeah, the the it was scary though in in scenes. That's what I think I like about this movie. I do, oh the videos like had me. I don't like anything that looks I know I knew you would like, like that. that. But the when the the jump scare when his son's coming out of a box. Oh, that was creepy. <laughs> You're like, you what see is this that? box open and he just like comes out backwards. You're <laughs> like, ah. Like who? What night yeah. terrors really make you do that? Oh yeah, my my daughter used to have night terrors. No, but and she, hers were more like a panic kind of a thing oh, where she okay. would just kind of like be. She wouldn't necessarily scream, but she would be like up and panicking and just freaking out. And were her we eyes would, open? Like, yeah, her eyes were open. Ah, see, that's what scares yeah. me. Yeah, and so uh. we would we would very gently. Can you to wake her. them up? I thought you couldn't. Step brothers taught me you're not supposed to wake. <laughs> Yeah, they say you're not supposed to wake them up. I'm like, no, we did. We just did it very gently. We would talk to her and until she would like realize who we were, and then she'd be happy, and then oh. put her back to bed, and everything would be fine. Nice, but yeah, I mean, it's a, it's freaky. It is really That's freaky scary. when it happens. Okay, yeah. yeah, that was that scared me. That was a pretty good moment in that movie, but and then that wasn't even the ghost. That was his son. Yeah. So I think that's what they do. They did. They did a good job setting up, like, for me at least. 
<laughs> the fact that it just keeps ramping up and I because I because I've seen this before I knew that he was gonna the the demon thing was gonna yeah. bagul was gonna move at some point and I was like when is it gonna happen when is it gonna happen and when it finally does I'm like oh there it is yeah and that's good that yeah kinda spooked me. there were well I, yeah I don't know for well it was dark when I was watching like my screen was dark so I really couldn't see a lot of things I did see the jump scares that yeah. did happen I did see like the snake and the little, you know, all those little things. But to me, I was just like, okay, I know this is going to happen next. Or I know this kind of a thing is going to happen next. It was very predictable. Predict- yeah, yeah. And it was like following all the classic tropes of like him being very obsessed and selfish and ignoring all of the warning signs right. that were thrown his way. And then they did the thing where he has the argument with the wife when she realized, when she finally found, uh, finds out that they're in a murder house. What do you expect and me to do? And she's like, what? And then, you know, they have the whole blow up thing where she's like, we have to leave. Right. We cannot be here. What are you doing? And then two seconds later, he's like, you're right. We have to leave. And she's like, what do you mean? <laughs> I hate it when they do that. When they, they go flip back it. Yeah. I'm like, no, dumbass. You're the one that was like, <laughs> you're the We're one that the, was yelling at him that affected. we got to go. No, yep. I would be like, if my husband was like, yeah, we got to go. I'd be like, OK. And mm-hmm. then just I'd leave everything here and just go. Yep. I wouldn't even question it. Nope. I'd be like, yes, yeah, we've been having this is a murder house. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, that's Let's not go cool. Home. Uh, <laughs> but I didn't see it coming where. It was the kids? Well, uh, no. I knew it was going to be one of the kids. I just didn't know which one of the oh, kids. Okay. And then when he was sent the pictures from the the occult specialist, oh. jo- Dr. Jonas. Yeah. When he was sent the pictures and I saw the scorpion, I was like, ooh, he killed a scorpion. Ooh, the snake. It's going to be him. He's the one that kills everybody. But I'm like, no, it's got to be one of the kids. Right. Because all the parents were always dying. Yeah. And it was one of the kids that did it. And then the reveal of it was cool. Right. Yeah. So the reveal of it was like, okay, I get it. And I'm glad that like he got it in the end. Yeah. (laughs) Spoiler. But like. How does How? Okay. Okay. Is it him tying everybody up or is it her tying everybody up? That's what I'm confused about. Like the the boogeyman, yeah. or is it her? Bagul well, or the kids? Because the kids cannot overpower their parents. Well, okay, so they drug them. Oh, drug. That's yeah. right. I forgot about the drugs. They drug they drug yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. And so, so they're able to do everything. The kid can do it. But I think still having also, to move your parents that are like twice, three times the size of but you. But I think like once the boogeyman I think eats possessed, the kid's soul or right. possesses the kid, they they get his That's man's true, strength. the strength. Yeah. I mean, he's, they've got to. Yeah. Spooky. Yeah. So anyway, the, the ending was cool. (laughs) It like made it better for me because that wasn't necessarily the ending that I was expecting to happen. Right. Because you're expecting them to get out of it somehow. Yeah. Yeah. And And then that's not what happened. And then when they provide the link, like you moved, that was your mistake. Spoiler. Um, but I mean, it's still cool. You guys can watch this movie. It's not like. I liked it. Yeah. It's 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 fine. I just like was kind of I don't know. I think I was just annoyed because it was so dark <laughs> and I couldn't see it. And I'm I just sorry. hated Ethan Hawke's character so much. Oh, no. He's such a jerk. But that's how he's time. written. He's supposed to be the I jerk. I know. He's drinking constantly. He's yes. doing stupid things. And like you hate what you're writing. Yep. Why are you doing it? And you're so obsessed with it. I'm like, yep. why are you obsessed with living like this horrible life? <laughs> <laughs> like there are better things you can do to make yourself happy. No, you don't have to make yourself way. miserable. He and, and his, he even explains it though at some point in his weird mind that he's going to solve this case because the police couldn't, you know. So I think he was trying to be this hero at he the same time. He has this crazy inferiority exactly. complex that he's constantly trying to overcome and yep. nothing's good enough. Nothing Things good enough. Yep. It's like it's gonna wait till my next book, and then everything will be turned good. around or whatever. But that's and always like, what they say. No. It's always the next thing. Yeah. But I still, I thought this as a horror movie is still pretty was pretty creepy, and it the producers of it were made Paranormal Activity and Insidious. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I thought it was well done. Yeah. I just like don't like the character. <laughs> <laughs> But Hung like it was character. well done. Yeah, it, it was. It was good. It's worth the watch. If and we watched it on Max over, for free. Yeah, it's way. free on Max. It's worth the watch. You just got to get over the annoying. And Ethan Hawke's a great actor. I just like 
drove me crazy. This is funny. My hubs would watch here and there with me. He's like, he's such he's bad acting. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. He has yeah. He's being like over the top in a way. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. Very much. Yeah. But yeah, how many stitches would you give it? We'll say five. I'm going to be very neutral on this one because okay. like it was. That's higher than I thought you were going to give Really? <laughs> it was good. It was fine. I wouldn't watch it again probably. Okay. It's not like necessarily my cup of tea. It's just pretty, like, it's pretty gut wrenching too though. If the characters are annoying, I just like it's harder. Him being annoying was harder to watch than the Super 8 videos, uh, which yeah. is crazy. Sure, sure. Because the Super 8 videos were like meant to look real real it's gruesome yeah and it was very gruesome mm-hmm. they did cut away from the super gruesome parts yes you know yeah so that's Thankfully. good you could still watch it in his glasses uh, kinda, but like, yeah yeah that was they nice. did cut away from the super gruesome stuff yeah um so it wasn't like super bloody but it was like you know it was you could tell what was happening yeah the, the intention was there yeah i would give it a 6.5 amdb gave it a 6.8 i'm gonna think i'm gonna give it a 6.5 okay yeah because i probably won't watch it every you know year but i'll probably pull this out again here and there once in yeah, a while just because i think there's a sinister too oh uh, well yeah it could keep going huh right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. didn't get as good <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i don't think i've ever seen probably because like you know what the yeah you can know what to is, expect you know the twist yeah you know how sense. all these things are linked right but anyway but i, I give it a 6.5 and I couldn't crochet to it because I kept having to watch because it was quiet. And I was like, what's happening? Like, you don't know. What's yeah. You I did sure. your trick of having the closed captioning on while I was yeah, watching I it. Yeah, I still do that. No yeah. What. So the closed captioning was on because then at least I could like Tell read what. what was going on <laughs> because I couldn't see anything on the screen. My screen was so dark. Oh, I that's funny. I figure out how to lighten everything up, but it was very dark. <laughs> so I have stitched like four more of these squares Look during at you this go. podcast. I'm so <laughs> proud of you. But this was like a really fun episode. Like I just, my mind was blown. Those videos are crazy. There's evidence that people's souls, if they don't understand that they have died, they're still here and they're very present. So Spooky, I think huh? that was so cool. Yeah. Natural wow. disasters, man. I'm sure there's more, but those are And that are makes me about. think of a recent thing. So we did kind of touch on this for our patrons that get the patron episodes. Yeah. In our last patron episode, we talked about The Exorcist. Yeah. But we also talked about current events that were happening. And like when we were recording that, that was when the people on the sub that went down to the Titanic. That's right. That was when that was happening. That was like right in the middle of it. Yeah, it was happening. And they we didn't know what had happened to the people. Until in the after sub. we released it. Until yeah. after. Yeah. So we didn't know what was going on. Um, and so at the time I was, you know, we didn't know right. if they were alive or not. But I can only imagine. And we, we there's TikToks on this too. So many. About how it was so sudden that they, they're, they didn't know that right. they were that they had died. Yeah. They didn't know the, because the it happened. The pressure implosion just happened, happened in so fast. Like not even a, like less than a second. It was like a millisecond or something right. crazy. So then there was that one TikTok that you shared with me yeah. about the, the, the mortician who was yes. talking about how when something happens that fast, you don't know, you don't feel, your brain doesn't have time to register. Nope. You anything can't process everything. And so she was talking about the banging. Yes. That, that they picked up and, and they're like, what, what weren't they, they dead already? Yes. They, yes, were, they dead were already, but, but you hear the banging and she's like, yeah, that's them saying, hello, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Yep. And it could be the Titanic passengers or it could have been the people on the sub. But she's like, I get that at 3 a.m. in my morgue all the time. Yeah, I'm like, ah! <laughs> They're banging on in the morgue. Yeah. So, oh, uh, wow. Anyway, this is a wild ride today. Yay! And this is a super long one. So thank you for hanging in yeah, this thanks, long everybody. with us, Stitchers. And until next time, we'll see you, Stitchers. See you, Stitchers. Uh-huh.